The Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Blade Zimande, is currently in Chengdu in the People's Republic of China. He's leading a South African delegation participating in, in the second ministerial Belt and Road Science and Technology Conference. The conference, themed Together for Innovation, Development for All, jointly building a scientific and technological innovation community for the Belt and Road. Minister Zimande joins us live now. Welcome, Minister. Thank you very much for joining us on On Point. It's a pleasure to always uh, have you in our company. Now, Minister, you're leading a delegation that's participating in the second ministerial Belt and Road Science and Technology Conference. Just for the benefit of those who might not be fully aware or appreciate, what is the conference about and what opportunities does it present for our country? Thank you very much, Mfundo. Uh, good day to, to you and uh, to your viewers and listeners. This is the second uh, conference convened by the Chinese government under the auspices of what they call the Belt and Road Initiative, which is a developmental program conceived in 2013 and implemented by the Chinese government in the main to assist and cooperate with developing countries in many areas of development. So one of the areas which they introduced last year was science and technology exchange, which is the second one which now they are holding. The first one was held in 2023. Just to look at how can we strengthen cooperation in science, technology, and innovation as the developing South, the poorer countries working together with China, and how can we benefit from each other's experiences, and especially also what can we learn from the Chinese amazing mm -hmm. levels and speed of development to change people's lives? For instance, China has recently lifted a third of their population from extreme poverty. There is no longer extreme poverty in China today. So I am participating here as part of this Belt and Road Initiative on Science and Technology. Now, you're asking... What is this going to benefit South Africa? Uh, or oh no, how is this going to benefit South Africa? In a number of ways. Firstly, I must say that we are building on relations on science, technology, and innovation that we established with the Chinese way back in 1999. Mm -hmm. The Chinese are partners in our square kilometer array, which is in Kanamon in the Northern Cape. They have, they've been very actively participating in that. We are now, just to be very concrete, uh, we are now also going to be setting up a station for what is known as their Bido system, which is a navigation system. To put it simply, we are going now going to be testing China's GPS, if one can use that language, although hmm. it's called the Bido system, so that we are not dependent, actually. I mean, if there's any lesson we are learning now from what the United States is doing, if you can switch off the GPS in South Africa today, there'll be chaos in the country. Mm. So we are now introducing the PIDO system. We are going to be setting up a station. Much more importantly, also under this program, we are going to be setting up a joint research center between China and South Africa on artificial intelligence, which is the main thing now in science. Whoever gets left behind on artificial intelligence is really going to have problems, whether it's in developing and growing our economy or responding to the many challenges that we actually face mm -hmm. as a country. Well, certainly we so, can't afford to be left behind, Minister. But pardon me there, we understand that you already met with the Chinese Association for Science and Technology as well as the yes. Chinese Academy of the Social Sciences. What, yes. has been, or what have been the highlights of that meeting for you? Well, the meeting with the Chinese Academy uh, of, uh, well, the Chinese Association of Science and Technology is that we were strengthening relations that it has already established, for instance, with our Council for Natural and Scientific Professions, which is our engineers and so on. They already have got joint programs uh, to develop engineering science and strengthen engineering science in South Africa, because Engineering, by the way, is not only important in its application. It's also important in terms of new ideas, innovation. So there is already cooperation on that. We have also what we've done with the uh, agreed we are going to do with uh, 
this association is to we, we do have a similar structure in South Africa, which is called uh, the the National Scientific National Science and Technology Forum which we want to strengthen now, because what they're doing in China is something that we've been battling with that I want to do in any case, mm. is to have science and technology forums at provincial level, as well as have them at local level. For instance, if you take Johannesburg, where you are, what are science and technology in initiatives that are taking place there? Are they communicating which is, uh, with each other? Is there coordination? Is they working together to pull resources together, involving the private sector, government entities, universities, uh, TVET colleges, to work together towards innovating, coming up with new ideas for development. In yeah. China, they have got science and technology governance structures right up to municipal level, which is something we've agreed that we're going to work together in order to do this. The other thing, by the way, CAST is running a very interesting system here of science museums. We visited the Beijing one, mm -hmm. which is actually the largest. It's an interactive museum which looks at the history of science in China, the history of them going to the moon, you know, launching satellites and all that. And it's used, they get 30,000 visitors per day in this museum. Mm, and it's mainly school kids. Mm. But it's also anybody else. So it's used to actually excite a young people about this. The one idea that is a takeaway from this is also they've got mobile laboratories and mobile museums, which you can take to rural areas using trucks because we don't have facilities for everybody there. You know, on a Monday, for instance, if you go urban areas, you go to Deep Kloof, they know this, this science museum or, or laboratory is going to be in Deep Kloof on a Monday and making an example. Then kids are actually able, school learners, to gather around that and be able to acquire knowledge. The main aim is to excite them about science because yeah. our mandate as the department is also to excite our youth uh, about, about science. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the center for the... the, the, the applied social sciences, they are doing a lot of research. They are now going to be partnering much more effectively with our Human Sciences Research Council. Mm -hmm. You Minister know that our Human Sciences Research Council has been doing some very good work, for instance, on attitudes and how to deal with gender-based yeah. violence. Minister, like unfortunately, that. we have run out of time. It was certainly a very important visit there and the delegation that you're leading. Sounds like quite a lot will come insofar as our collaboration with the People's Republic of China. But just in closing, please do indulge us. If you took off your hat as a, polit as a minister right now and put on that of a politician, we're a step closer to having our national dialogue as a country where we will shape our trajectory and talk of our collective aspirations because a lot is going wrong in society right now. What are your views on just yesterday being that step closer to that national dialogue where the president has now announced the 31 member panel that will be steering us to that road to have that national dialogue? I think that must be it's something that we must welcome as a country, uh, Fundo, that the country must have a dialogue. Indeed, we are faced with many problems. Yeah. So that we are able, it's part, I see that as part of mobilizing South African society on how to deal with the many problems that we face. Raising, just raising from, ranging from basic things. Our cities are so dead, mm. you know. I drive here in China. You can't even find a piece of paper. It's like you can eat from a pavement, eh, food. Mm. Well, crime that we face, you know, and we're a nation that seems to be angry against its women. Yeah. Some of the things that we are actually doing. The economy is a big, big, big issue in terms of tackling unemployment and all that. So we need to have a dialogue as a country. And to honestly, this dialogue, though, must honestly reflect where have we gone wrong? Yeah. Why, given the hope of 1994, we are having the kinds of problems? We are not saying we have not made advances. We must also reflect on them. Where we have done well, how have we done it? How can we actually... A build on that. Mm. The most important concern for me, of course, is that 
This must not end up to being an elite engagement or a discussion amongst the elite. Unless this national dialogue places at the center of it the working class and poor South African, and how do we in particular change their situation and conditions such that they regain the hope of 1994, they actually regain the hope as contained in our constitution, the practical things that we must do as a country. Mm. Minister? If we do that, yeah. we're going to get someone. Mm, thank you very much for indulging us. Thank you very much for your time. That's Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Blade Zimande, who's currently in Chengdu in the People's Republic of China. They're saying perhaps we need to go back and look at the aspirations of 1994 and see if we can reset that button.